So I had a whole list of videos in the helm ready to stitch together for you guys on how I did this. Sometimes computers and cameras just fight you like anything else. Alrighty. So, I'm not going to take it all apart and put it back together for that. Here's where I'm at. The BOP Turbo 400 is bolted to the 48. Yeah, this one uses four mounting points. I don't necessarily agree with that. I would prefer to use all six, but hey, whatever. You got Allen screws here. You got them on the inside of the bell. Blah, blah, blah. I used two studs at the top. I replaced that junk factory uh, dipstick with this nice unit from FTI Performance. Purchased it from Summit Racing. It doesn't use an O-ring, it uses a nice grommet. You can tell how bad the old one was leaking. Alrighty, now the fun part. I didn't bolt the torque converter up, because I want to do a little bit of an explanation. So, as I lay down here, let's get everybody coordinated. You can obviously see, follow my finger, there's the spacer, the adapter from Hughes PRW ICT billet. Here's your converter flange. The converter is all the way, now it is, seated in the transmission. The gap between the flex plate and my finger is approximately half of an inch. Sliding the converter completely forward, it bottoms out here, as I described in one of the other videos. See, you can see how it's bottoming out, leaving approximately a quarter inch gap between the flex plate and the, fl uh, the flange. I'm thinking I'm going to go get some 3 8 thick bushings and cut the gap in between. Meet it in the difference. Take your quarter here, roughly half here, three-eighths here, everybody's happy. Because the converter doesn't pull out of the trans far enough to be an issue. I don't want to put too big of spacers in here because now you're going to run the risk of potentially damaging the front pump and the transmission. And also I mean, it's still tight, but you can see how far out that adapter nose has come. It's barely in there. It's the best course of action, I feel. Bottom it out. Put out three-eighths of an inch gap. I've never had this issue with a factory converter in this setup. A factory converter to 200R is, you may have an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch tops gap between the flange and the flex plate. But I found the more aftermarket stuff you use, the more fiddling you have to do with it. This was never designed from the factory to be a perfect fit. So, so that's kind of where I'm at. Next step is going to the hardware store. Creates bushings. Everything else clears fine. Everything else clears just fine. Basically resealed this bad boy. Um, before we put it in the car, I'm going to get it set up as though it would go in the car. I'm going to fill it with fluid and check for leaks. Because my brother would park it and it would leak. More than likely from the dipstick tube. So yeah, it's a pretty good stopping point. But I owe you guys an update. Um, bolting a BOP. 350, 400 up to one of these engines is not that difficult. Ideally, you want a Chevy Trans for the ease of installation, but most of us have to work with what we got. And this is what we got. So I'm working with it. Alrighty, here's my little Wednesday update. This upcoming Sunday, I will be back at Dan's place getting that engine, that 6 liter, and that Muncie M21 finally mated together. 
we figured out what the issue was. I can't wait to show you guys. It's kind of silly on our part, but it was kind of unexpected because nobody ever really explained it. It's got something to do with the fact that the engine has a long crankshaft. So just wait till Sunday and see. It's enough of that. Uh, it's raining here, and I think I'm gonna go uh, wind down for the evening. And I'll catch you go. I'll catch up with you guys soon. Please like and subscribe. Comments are welcome. Take it easy, guys.